Hi there and welcome to this video on using Jupyter Notebooks inside of Excel. I'll start with a quick demo and then we'll dive into some details so that you can learn how to do this yourself. To use Jupyter from Excel, we need to install the Pixel add-in. I've already done that uh, and I'll go into how to install that in a little bit. But for now, I'll just press this Jupyter button and that will bring up a Jupyter Notebook inside of Excel. This is actually running in Excel. Uh, I can pull it out as a floating window, but I generally prefer to leave it docked here. I find it easier to work with that way. Here I've got a data set which I downloaded from Spotify. Uh, it's just a, a sample of, of their, uh, their stats about what was played, I think in 2018. Uh, anyway, it's not too important what the data is for this demo, but I'm just gonna show you a few things using this data uh, in a Jupyter notebook, but all running in Excel. As I would normally in Jupyter, I can go and create a new notebook here. Uh, and now this is running Python, but Python that's running inside of Excel. That lets me do some interesting things, like I can use this magic function, Excel get. And if I run that, it's getting me all of this data into a pandas data frame. Here it's just done it based off where the selection is. But if I wanted to do it from a specific cell, I could just pass in cell, uh, I use cell A1 in this case. And also I'll get it into a, a data frame variable like this. So there we go, and if I look at this DF, you can see I've got my, my data here. Now I've got it as a pandas data frame, uh, I can do some things with it. Uh, I'm just gonna filter it, uh, just, that's quite an easy thing to do. Obviously I could do this in Excel as well, but with pandas, uh, it does open up some more possibilities to do more, more complex analysis. So I'm just gonna see where uh, artist equals Drake and get the rows for that. There we go, you can see now I've got the rows where just filtered by artist is Drake. Now if I wanted to write this back to Excel, I can do quite easily. Uh, I'll do it in a new sheet. And what I can use is this other magic function, Excel set, as you can imagine, that's similar to the Excel get function, but it's gonna set the data frame this time. So I'll set this whole thing. Uh, and this time I will I'll pass in a cell, and I say, write it to sheet two, uh, A1. And there we go, there's that filtered data written back to Excel. One of the nice things about working in uh, pandas in Python is that we can plot stuff really easily. So if we look at the original data frame and plot, uh, let's plot loudness and energy, those two are probably quite correlated. So I can do X is loudness, Y is energy, and we'll do that as a scatter plot. So I can very quickly like visualize this data and, and play around with it and see, you know, whatever I need to do with it, I can do using pandas in this interactive notebook. Now, if I was uh, writing an Excel report for someone else to read, then it might be quite useful to be able to take that graph there and put it back into Excel. And that's exactly what I can do uh, with this, with this Jupyter notebook. I can use another magic function, Excel plot, uh, and I just take the same thing here. And by running this, not only does it plot in my Jupyter notebook, but I also get exactly the same plot in Excel here. The final thing I want to show is writing Excel functions in Python. Uh, you're probably familiar already with writing worksheet functions in VBA, but I want to show how we can do exactly the same thing in Python. Uh, what I'll do is from the pixel module, import this Excel func decorator. Now, if I write a function like, uh, I don't know, PyTest, it just takes a couple of arguments and uh, let's just say, just return the sum of those two for now. Uh, I can easily test this in Python. So, you know, obviously that's uh, nothing, nothing surprising there. But now if I apply this Excel func decorator to this thing, what will happen now is that I can go into uh, into Excel and now this Python function is uh, is available to me here. And that's running this Python code here from this notebook. So if I go and make some changes to this, then in uh, in Excel, when I rerun that formula there, you know, that function has, has updated. So this is a really nice way of playing around with some Python code, but then having it uh, automatically be reflected into Excel in a way that I can call from my, from my workbooks. Now this isn't just limited to uh, to single number arguments like this. I could pass in entire data frames and return data frames using using this method. Uh, I'll just show this quickly by creating a function 
that'll take a data frame uh, and then call the describe method on that data frame. So here I've got a, uh, a Python function here that takes a data frame and we'll just return df describe. Uh, if I call this from Python, then it's not much different from calling the method directly, but uh, but let's just check that it works. So df describe df returns me this data frame here with some statistics about the data frame. Now if I add my Excel Funk decorator, this time I'll do something slightly different, and I'm going to tell it that the input type is a data frame, and uh, the result is also going to be a data frame, but I'm going to tell it that I want to include the index in what gets returned to Excel. Now I've done that, I can then go ahead and call this function from Excel. So let's try this here, df describe, and I'll pass in this whole thing here, and then there we go. It's returning me exactly what I saw in, in Python, but uh, in Excel. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how you can install all of that for yourself. The add-in that we're using is called Pixel, that's P-U-I-X-L-L, and you can go to the website here, pixel.com. Here you'll find all the documentation that you need on how to use all the various features, uh, along with some high-level descriptions of, of everything that you can do using Pixel. There's also a download link that you can use to use the free trial. You'll need to have Python installed. Here I'm using Miniconda, but you can use whatever Python environment you're familiar with. Uh, I'm going to start off by activating my Python environment, which is a Python 3.9 one. And then using pip, I can install the pixel Python package. So just doing pip install pixel. And then once that's installed, I can use this pixel command line to install the actual Excel add-in itself. So if you do pixel install, that will then uh, take you through the process of downloading the add-in. But if you already have it downloaded, you can just drop it in here. So here I'm doing pixel install, and then the file name of the zip file that I downloaded. And then it's asking me where I want to install it. So I'm just gonna choose the default path. And there we go, so now it's installed. If you go to the path that it's installed it in, you'll see that there's uh, a readme file and there's some examples as well. So that's a good place to start if you've not used Pixel before. But for this though, because we wanted to use the Pixel Jupyter uh, thing, we also have to do pip install pixel-jupyter. Uh, now this is a separate package from Pixel, but it's like a, it's kind of like a plugin package that provides that additional Jupyter functionality. So if you pip install that, when that's finished, uh, everything should now be good to go. So now if we start Excel, and then just go into a blank workbook, here you can see we've got this pixel example tab. This example tab can be changed to be, you know, however you like, uh, and we can change the name of this. But the important thing is that here we've got this Jupyter button, and if we click this, then the Jupyter, the Jupyter notebook loads here, and we can go ahead and create a new notebook. If you go to the uh, the PyPy page for the Pixel Jupyter project, so PyPy.org, just pull that up, Py, Pixel, oops, Pixel Jupyter, there it is. Uh, you'll see there's some documentation here on, on how to use it. Uh, and there's also a bit of documentation here on how to configure it. So here we've got a couple of different options. One is to use the workbook directory for the location of the notebooks, and the other is to set a different directory for the, the default location that comes up. The way to configure this is with the pixel.config config file. So if you go to the folder where Pixel's installed, you'll see that there's this uh, config file here. Now if I open that up, So this is my pixel config for the add-in. I haven't changed it uh, from the default, so you'll probably want to go in and make some other changes here. But what I'm gonna do is just add that example bit of config for the Jupyter notebook down to the bottom here. And I'm not gonna change the, the notebook directory here, but I am gonna change this use workbook directory. So what this will do is the next time I open uh, an Excel workbook and then go and open uh, the Jupyter notebook, the folder that it will show me will be the folder that the Excel workbook is, is stored in. Back in Excel now, if I open that Spotify document that we were looking at before, now if I go into here and open the, the Jupyter notebook, now it's starting in the same folder as my workbook, and I can get back to that 
uh, that notebook that we started with. So I hope this has been interesting and given you a few ideas of how you can use Python and Excel together. And uh, if you have any questions at all, then please don't hesitate to contact us.